right. Good morning, Lagos. Good morning, um, Nigeria, wherever it is you are listening um, from. This is Follow the Money, brought to you by Naira Metrics. My name is Ugodre Obichuku, and I will be anchoring this show. We couldn't do this business, but here, <laughs> how was your week? Pretty busy week. A lot of Nigerians had a shocker. <laughs> no one expected what happened towards the tail end of last week with, you know, a new removal of subsidy. This time it wasn't full subsidy, it was electricity subsidy. So a lot of people are not finding it funny. Like, I have never seen Nigerians really understand the difference between band A and B and C and D and all that stuff. People have basically gotten solid education, you know? Like I always say, sometimes you want to educate people, just, you know, take the money away from them and they read up about it, right? So everybody now understands what all these things mean uh, because it does have a huge impact uh, in your pocket. Anyway, this is Follow the Money. If you're just listening for the first time, uh, we do this every Monday, 8 to 8.30. It's brought to you by Naira Metrics. If you miss any part of the show, you just want to replay it, or maybe there was something I said that uh, you didn't hear well and you want to hear again, you want to listen to it, uh, or you want to listen to previous versions, you can always go back to uh, any of your you know podcast play, podcast uh, apps, whether it's Spotify or Google Podcasts or even Apple, Apple Podcasts, and you will see... Uh, you can get any of our previous shows or even this particular one, which uh, will be loaded uh, in a few hours. Uh, just go there, search Follow the Money by Naira Metrics, and you will see the podcast there. All right, so uh, busy week last week. Our earnings bliss. Yes, earnings, 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 earnings. Companies are dishing out results left, right, and center. And so we're going to be looking at all these, uh, some of the key results that popped out in the last week and a half. Uh, this time around, I'm going to focus on manufacturing companies. So, um, it's going to be interesting. We're going to dish out a little more stuff for you so that you can um, maybe understand which companies you want to you know, invest in or companies that might pique your interest. What I did notice, though, is a lot of companies uh, did do well last year despite you know all the headwinds that we had and despite all the FX challenges and all. Some companies actually posted profits and pretty interesting to see uh, how they were able to do it. I'm going to go through some of them as time permits. But, we look at the all share index that's Nigerian stock exchange the whole of last week. Remember, this show is purely market, so we mostly deal with the stock market here. Uh, of course, we often touch on key economic issues. Uh, if there's anything that we think I should break down for you, I should explain, you know, for you or to you, just uh, of course send me a tweet or send a message to any of the Narometrics WhatsApp channels. You can just go on your WhatsApp and then you find Narometrics there. All right, so. The NGX All Share Index and market capitalization depreciated by 0.08% uh, and 59 trillion respectively last week. Markets fell a little bit last week uh, because uh, it kind of looks like banks, the stock market or investors were still digesting the effects of, of the bank recapitalization announcement that occurred two weeks ago. If you all remember, two weeks ago, uh, the central bank issued new policy directives that gave banks two years to raise, um, you know, new, new share cap, new, new capital, uh, essentially taking out retained earnings as well from the capital that they meant to raise. So, uh, looks like banks need around roughly four, 4.5 or so trillion naira you know, to raise over the next two years. From what we're hearing, the number of banks that are already, uh, some have actually even secured this money, right? I'm not going to name those banks, but we're hearing that some banks already have part of this money secured uh, already. And some are working very hard and want to have this thing wrapped up uh, before the summer. Some want to have it wrapped up before the end of the year. Uh, so it's going to be a very pretty intense uh, few months for the investing community uh, as well. But uh, investors in the meanwhile are not reacting that positively to it. I think people are trying to figure out what this means for their portfolio, what this means for their share price. Uh, do I just sell now uh, and then wait because, you know, you probably think that the share prices will drop. Uh, some people believe that share prices could drop because, um, um, you know, if banks or if these companies or if these banks, banks actually, if these banks are going on the right issue, then it is very likely that they could uh, want to buy at a lower price, right? They could want their share price to be slightly lower, uh, especially if it's a right issue so that they can be able to afford stock. That's one one school of thought. And that school of thought is like, well, you know what? No, it's not going to be like that. Uh, banks will probably want their share prices to be steady, uh, higher, more expensive, so that they have less shares to sell. Uh, of course, you all know what that means. The more shares you have to sell, then the lower your earnings per share. And this also has a direct impact 
on the value of your stock. And so it's 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 a bit you know, and I I don't know which one, you can pick anyone really, but uh, we kind of think investors are uh, are a little bit. Uh, pessimistic at, at the moment. So you're seeing, you know, all share uh, index kind of dip. And last week, um, you know, all share index dip, like I said, by 0.08%. Uh, Nevertheless, the banking index, that's the NGX banking index, did actually rise by 1.93%. So perhaps maybe uh, it's just a broader reaction to equities, the equity market. So not a banking sector related issue. Uh, even though we did see some banks pull back uh, in terms of value uh, last week. Albeit, all share index still up at 9.84%, uh, still one of the best performing stock markets in the world. Uh, the Q1, which ended um, just over a week ago, we were hitting about, I think, wasn't it about 40% or so in terms of uh, return, first, first quarter return or not one year of first quarter return. Uh, but we're still at 9%, which is pretty good. Uh, NGX 30 index, which is the index of the 30 most capitalized company, uh, companies on the exchange, uh, also up 39%. So the, the broader all share index essentially mirroring the, the NGX 30 index, which means that most of the solid companies uh, on the exchange are doing pretty well. In fact, the premium index, which is where you have most, the most, the most, the most capitalized six or seven stocks, uh, is up 42%. So nearly all the indexes, uh, are up, the major ones that is are up uh, year to day. But hey, pension index, what's going on with PFAs? PFAs, how are you selecting your stocks? It seems like pension index is up 21.39%. Still pretty good, but uh, you're kind of lagging the premium index and lagging uh, the broader all share index. So, um, CIOs of PFAs, so what's your stock selection like? I mean, like, come on, shouldn't you be doing better than the broader index? I think you should be doing better than broader index. Uh, and not, uh, you know, at 21.39%, which is good, by the way, but, I mean, you want to always beat uh, the broader index and, or at least beat the premium index or the NGX 30 index. So uh, but it's kind of strange that, you know, the pension index is up only 21.39%. Anyway, still good because it's double digits. Uh, so last week, like I said, 40 stocks appreciated uh, uh, last week compared to 50 the week before, uh, which, you know, maybe suggests, investors are probably profit taking and maybe uh, it's not a reaction to uh, the, the, the central bank decision to get banks to recapitalize so dividends were also announced last week as well a uh, number of ones uh, interesting dividend announcement that might interest you so if you're a shareholder of total energies marketing nigeria plc if you've got total total you know total shares um they're proposing a 25 naira dividend and they're going to be making that payment 24th of june i've always wondered why do companies have to wait months to pay dividend i mean like two whole months to pay dividend anyway um you only get to earn this dividend if you're a shareholder up until the 23rd of april anything after the 23rd of april they're not going to pay you dividend you're not going to, even if you if you buy the shares after the 23rd of april you're not going to get dividend in total. So, total is paying 25 naira per share. Now, for Access Bank fans or so Access holding uh, shareholders, uh, Access also released its result. It was one of the first Fugas banks uh, to release their results two weeks ago. Uh, they did quite well. And so, they are also proposing 1 naira 80 kobo in dividend. Uh, no bonus issues. Uh, but to earn that dividend, you've got to be a shareholder um, by. 10th of April 2024. So you just have till tomorrow. If you don't buy Axis Bank shares by tomorrow, you're not going to get this dividend. That's just what it means. So you got to own Axis Bank shares by tomorrow. You have to tomorrow to buy Axis Bank shares if you want to own that, if you want to earn that dividend, one naira 80 copper um, per share. And they're going to be making payments. Hmm, can you see now? 19th of, of April. I mean, why do you have to wait till June to get dividends? <laughs> why do you have to wait till June? So they're paying 19th of April. Just uh, a week or so from now, or 10 days uh, from now, uh, Access Holding is going to be paying. So if you want to own Access Bank shares, you better buy like not later than tomorrow. If you want to own Access Bank dividend, not later than tomorrow. United Capital as well, one of my favorite stocks, um, also did quite well. They, they pushed out their results some weeks back and another blistering performance uh, by that company. Um, proposed dividend, one naira eighty kobo. Uh, qualification date is today. So you have till today to own this 
uh, to own the stock if you want to get a dividend. So if you buy the, the stock today and you're likely going to earn a dividend by the 23rd of April this year, that's when they're going to be paying. So um, for those who want to be part of um, um, United Capital, wait, wait a minute, today is actually 8, so tomorrow, oh, good, tomorrow. So tomorrow is 9, yeah. So today, it's, so tomorrow is 9, so you got to own this, you got to buy there to buy it. And now, um, let's go on to another one. Chemical Allied Allied Products, very, another very solid manufacturing company. They are into paints. Uh, they also declare dividend one hundred fifty Um You have to the thirty first thirty first of May to own this one. Uh, they didn't announce when they're going to be paying, uh, but it's one hundred fifty five Cabo. SFS Real Estate uh, Investment Trust, a rate that is quoted on the exchange. They are declaring fourteen naira fifty Cabo uh, dividend uh, payment date is fourteenth of may and to qualify uh you gotta be able to own that stock at least on the 19th of april uh this year dn maria also um declared dividend uh it's a paint company uh just like uh, chemical ally ally products their dividend is 30 cover qualification date 26th of april and they're paying that dividend 27th of may uh way over a month from now uh, and then, and of course you also have transmissions white express uh, they're paying two cover dividend two cover only in dividends <laughs> qualification date uh 11th of june 2024 they are paying 20th of june 2024 that's like almost two over two months uh wait uh, for this one and then finally infinity trust merchant mortgage bank uh they are paying 15 cover uh dividend and qualification date is 12th of april 2024 uh they're going to be making payment on the 13th of may 2024 so those are the dividend announcements the last week so which of the stocks do you really favor which one do you think uh sweet enough for you to maybe want to own it before uh the qual- on or before the qualification date well i have my own picks my own personal picks because this is my own picks my own opinion you don't have to follow my opinion um but i can think access and united capital are somewhere in between interesting to me so in terms of um the stocks that i look at and i say hmm, this is something that maybe might be my watering access uh, united capital but of course you want or you want to always juxtapose it with with the current share price so divide this dividend by the current share price it gives you an idea of what the earnings yield is right and is yield the return so if if the return is above eight nine ten percent then maybe uh, pretty good. You do see some stocks that your that your dividend yield is way above ten uh, percent, which is quite a good number. So that's also a way of determining whether a share price uh, is overvalued or not. So um, that basically is um, the first half of the show. When I come back, we're going to be looking at earnings, and we have about nine companies that I want to review. I don't know if I can do all of them on the show, uh, but I'll try as much as possible to go through most of the stocks so that you can have an idea of how well they performed. Uh, so stay glued. We're going to be back right now. Follow the Money with Ugo Dre. We'll be right back. You're listening to Follow the Money with Ugo Dre. <laughs> All right, today I was going to be right back, right back, right now. And so we're here, um, just a short coffee break for me to just take a little bit of my coffee. Anybody who knows me know I love coffee a lot. <laughs> all right, so a lot, number of results. And the first one I want to look at here is hotels. We all know hotels took a beating during COVID and, you know, a couple of years after COVID. 2020, 2021, and 2022, uh, some parts of 2022 weren't really a very good year for hotels. People in the hotel business will tell you those were very terrible years for them because, of course, people weren't really traveling. There was still a lot of uh, COVID-19 rules out there. Um, people were still, you know, practicing safe distancing and all that stuff. And, and of course, we were still in, you know, way into the world of virtual walking, remote walking, rather. Uh, people could easily just do meetings, uh, over virtual platforms like, you know, Zoom and Teams and all that stuff. And so it really wasn't working for a lot of uh, hotels and they did see revenues dip. But it looks like 2023 was a huge bounce back uh, for some of the hotels. Most hotels in Nigeria are not quoted. I don't know why. You only have like two or three hotels. As much as we have a lot of hotels in Nigeria, they are not quoted on the exchange. We only have, you know, two major hotels 
and quoted on the exchange. And uh, in fact, there are three of them: Ikeja Hotels, Transcorp Hotel, and I think Capital uh, Capital Hotels or something like that. So, but two of the companies did post their earnings last week. Uh, one was Ikeja Hotels PLC. Uh, they posted total gross earnings of eleven billion. Yeah. So Ikeja Hotels are the owners of Sheraton Hotels. So Sheraton Hotel, like you all know, uh, in Lagos here posted 11 billion in revenues uh it was actually down uh it was it was um i think it was down 13 percent year on year however uh gross profit was 4 billion up 13.5 percent uh year on year and of course pre-tax profit was 2 billion so they made a, they made a sorry, sorry profit after tax was 2 billion uh which was 152 percent up year on year so Great result for Ikaja Hotel. Uh, the share price, of course, reacted uh, as just the stock market reacted positively to, positively to that result. It was up 9.9% when it was announced. And um, share price up 7% year to date as well. Uh, though the 52 week high for Ikaja Hotel is about 10 naira. Uh, so, why did it happen? Well, the insights we have is that um, the growth was up at attributed to exchange rate gains. Strange, right? Yeah, but uh, hotels also do collect. Um, you know, revenues in, in FX. Uh, hotels are one of those businesses out there that are allowed to collect revenue in dollars. So when foreign investors, foreign visitors come into Nigeria and they want to stay in your hotel, they can, they're actually allowed to pay in dollars. Of course, you must have been registered to all the relevant agencies. And so Ikeja Hotel did quite well. So congrats to uh, Ikeja Hotels. Our earnings per share there was also 96 cobo up 151%. Year on year, and I'll move on to the next one. Trust Cup Hotel, those are the owners of Hilton in Abuja, and I think also on the Hilton in, in Calabar. So, but uh, the key, the main, main, main company is actually Trust Cup Hotel, Trust Cup in Abuja. The, we all know Trust Cup, Trust Cup in Abuja, and so that hotel, you know, how much revenue they made last year alone in 2023? Wait for it 42.7. Billion. Yes, that's what that hotel made last year. Incredible number. Up 35.8% year on year. That's just a solid business out there. Gross profit was 30 billion, up 36% year on year. And of course, um, profit after tax was 6 billion, uh, 132.9% up year on year. Solid, solid numbers from Truscop Hotel. Uh, no, no surprises. It's been one of the best performing stocks last year. Uh, still one of the best performing stocks this year. It looks like investors are lapping it. They love it. They love what they're seeing. Uh, so the company doing quite well. Uh, expenses was up though, uh, uh, up 23%, uh, you know, to 18 billion last year. Uh, nevertheless, still a solid number, 6 billion in profits uh, for Truscop Hotel. Hotel businesses can be sweet, man. Jeez, Forty-two billion in revenue in one year. That's just one hotel. Uh, well, people would tell is one of the best hotels in Nigeria. So, what do you expect? And then we will move on to a company that I've been tracking for some years now. And it, this is one company that we all know. One of the oldest companies in Nigeria, and it's been going through a lot of changes. They've been trying to fix things. They've been trying to, you know, restructure the business. Trying to bring back the glory days. They have a very young, solid CEO out there uh, trying to make things happen. It was acquired just a few years ago, uh, you know, by a private equity company, of course, owned by that CEO, and then he's coming, uh, coming as well. Um, um, you know, with his management team, and they've been trying to turn around that company. That company sells a lot of products that all of us know. I mean, we all eat it. Uh, mostly the one that the hawk on on um, on this on Ted Milan or, or most traffic, uh, you know, traffic uh, spots, hotspots uh, in Nigeria. Of course, we all know that company. That company is uh, UAC Nigeria. So UAC uh, Nigeria. Um, Owned by uh, you know Temis Capital and of course uh, founded by Fola Fola is is the CEO of that uh, of that company. Uh, they they have been trying to do a lot of innovations uh, over the last uh, few years uh, and of course uh, they brought in uh, also a new MD CEO for their UAC Foods Limited. I think sometime last year, uh, Olumide Oloyedi doing doing quite a number of good jobs there and we can immediately see results. Uh, revenue was one twenty point five billion. Last year, up 10, 10%. USA Nigeria is one of the very flagship first conglomerates in this country. I'm sure a lot of us know them. You know all their products, Mr. Biggs, the Gala, they all do all that. Uh, that's basically sort of some of the customers. They also own chemical ally paints, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, so revenue was 120 billion, uh, up 10% uh, year on year. Um, profit after tax, 8.9 billion, uh, 
22% year on year. So more than tripled uh, year on year. And of course, they also have a good solid cash balance of 25.2 billion as at the end of last year. And so earnings per share, three naira, uh, 14 corbo and retain earnings. Uh, I've told my at the metrics now, we started taking retain earnings very seriously. So we now report it separately uh, because retain earnings do matter. Anyway, so retained earnings was 33.9 billion uh, versus 25.3 billion uh, in 2022. So solid numbers here, solid balance sheet, solid company with a pile of cash. Uh, they did pretty well. And uh, they said that the, the, you know, the profitability was due to uh, a lot of important stuff that they did uh, in most of their divisions, uh, particularly um, their subsidiaries as well. Uh, the group operates four key segments, animal feeds, um, other edibles, paints, packaged foods and beverages, and of course their QSR uh, division. And from what we hear, uh, most of these uh, divisions did pretty well. Uh, the animal feed, feeds and other edible segments recorded revenue of 64 billion, paint segment uh, 23.8 billion, packaged foods and beverage segments uh, 28.5 billion, and then QSR division 3.7 billion. I believe that's that's also the division that has Mr. Big. So solid numbers around around from UAC. Uh, this solid uh, um, analysis uh, that you get on this company on our metrics sometimes this week. So you might, want, might you might want to watch out for that. So solid job there from um, Fola. Uh, AAC Mojo, who is the GMD of UAC, doing some good jobs um, as well. Because of time, I really can't go into some of the things that they said, explaining how they perform. But solid numbers there uh, for UAC. And then we we'll go to Okomo Oil, also one of my favorite Nigerian companies. This is one company that has really benefited from a lot of all this move towards local production that you keep seeing the CBN, talk, you, keep, you keep seeing the government talk about all the time. Uh, they basically produce locally and most of their market is local. Uh, they are an oil palm producing company and has been one of the best performing stocks. I recall buying Okomo oil about eight, nine years ago at maybe 35 naira or something like that. And that stock is what over 200 naira today. I think 270 naira if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so solid, solid. Um, uh, so 240 naira or thereabout. So solid numbers and they've always paid dividend. So yet again this year, they did outdo themselves. Uh, revenue from you know, in 2023 was 75 billion, up 27% year on year. Uh, of course, um, profit after tax um, was 20, it's 20, 20.6 billion, up 27% year on year. Uh, earnings per share, 21.6 naira, um, up 27% year on year. So it's a company that is growing in numbers, like the numbers are doing pretty well. So growth is slightly below inflation, but uh, adjusted for, you know, average inflation seem to be doing quite well as a company. They did beat a lot of solid numbers last year. So Kumo Oil is one company you want to, you want to check out. Uh, some key details. In 2023, the company said the posted value of its harvested produce as 1 billion represented a 60.5 uh, increase from 630 million posted in 2022. Uh, they harvested over 208, about 279,000 tons of fresh food Fruit bunches, which essentially is one of the major uh, things that they sell, uh, representing a 12% increase uh, from what they did the year before. Uh, they also sold 56,103 tons of palm oil in 2023, up 13%. So, all around solid numbers there for Okomo Oil. So, if you're a shareholder of Okomo Oil, your company did quite well last year. So, kudos. And of course, we now move to one of the biggest, if not the largest, um, you know, food manufacturing company in Nigeria. Uh, you know, most of the food manufacturing companies in Nigeria is owned foreign, owned by, by, by foreign investors, but this one is actually purely Nigerian owned and their numbers are actually quite solid. Uh, Boa Foods, uh, I had mentioned them here, I think, when they released their intern results, but the final results are out and again, they've outdone themselves. So, Boa Foods revenue up 74% year on year to $729 billion. Uh, Profit after tax, $112 billion uh, up 22.7 percent year on year earnings per share six naira up 23 percent year on year uh total assets now is over a trillion naira up 76 percent year on year solid solid number according to the company uh, they said the primary revenue driver for them was fortified sugar that's where they get most of their money from uh they, they, they made uh nearly half of their revenue from fortified sugar, sugar alone 339.7 billion uh, from fortified sugar up um uh, 162% from the same period 
2022. So that was the major driver um, for them. Then they also did work quite well uh, in their bakery business. Their bakery flour business did quite well. Uh, they did 200 billion uh, from that business uh, last year, which is also a 151% growth as well. So solid numbers all around uh, for Boa Foods. Uh, they did pretty well last year. So if you're a shareholder of Boa Foods, your company did quite well last year. Solid number for a local manufacturing company. So if you notice, it's just been a theme here. So for a lot of these companies, they've not really been exposed to that FX devaluation losses that most of the foreign companies recorded, which is interesting. So is it that the Nigerian guys found a better model, a better way of managing their operation that than the foreign guys because it kind of looks like a lot of the foreign businesses took most of their loans in dollars, mostly intercompany loans. But the local Nigerian businesses, perhaps not being able to get those, those sort of foreign support, uh, took most of their loans in Naira and perhaps now bought, converted to dollars to buy their raw materials. So on their balance sheet, they weren't carrying dollar-denominated loans. And so for that reason, they weren't incurring uh, dollar-denominated losses. And, and so, in a way, you see how things just pan out sometimes. Uh, the devaluation hasn't really hit them that much, even though a lot of them are actually quite highly indebted. So, But their numbers look quite solid. At least you've seen it so far. They've been reeling out mostly positive numbers. And now that kind of takes us to Cadbury. Cadbury is another company that has been trying to do a lot of turnaround. Uh, they have an uh, MD CEO uh, who has been there for some years now, trying to turn that company around, trying to nudge it forward, despite all the economy headwinds. They are in serious competition with Nestle as you all know Nestle has always uh, been ahead for some years now so Cadbury is just behind you know trying to get in there uh, but they've had a number of slip-ups as they try to restructure and as they try to bounce back most of the challenges have always been around uh, FX and and I've, I've, like we reported at Narimetrics last year their net assets were essentially wiped out because of FX related issues but the company itself looks like it's a solid business uh, revenue 80.4 billion up 46% last year Operating profit, which I really like, because that's really that really shows you how well the business is doing by itself, without external issues like lending and you know an exchange rate and factors that you really sometimes can't really control. So, as a business, the core business itself, operating profit seven point nine billion, which was up almost four thousand percent year on year. So, in terms of operating profit, you can see a lot of work that the company itself has been trying to do to turn things around. Uh, but because of FX, they did incur a loss before tax of about $28 billion. So, so that is, uh, you know, for Cadbury. But I think that uh, without the FX losses, they probably would have done better. And then we also have Unilever. Unilever also did real revenue, $109 billion, up 51%. Um, profit for the year, $8.4 billion, up 88.9%. Unilever has been trying to, uh, um, uh, I think it's one of those companies that want to delete. I hope I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, but um, they've done pretty well last year as well. So the shareholders should be happy with the numbers. And then Transcorp Power as well, done pretty well as well. Uh, revenue, this is their first result, by the way. Revenue, $142 billion, up 57%. Profit after tax, $30 billion, up 74.9%. We'll probably talk about Transcorp Power uh, at some point later. And then finally for me, it's Fitzen Healthcare. Revenue, $53 billion. Fitzen is a pharmaceutical company in Nigeria. Revenue, $50, $53 billion. Profit, Profit after tax, 3.6 billion, down 13.8% year on year, but still a solid number. Uh, they're into healthcare, they sell, you know, pharmaceutical drugs. So that is it, guys, uh, for this week. Uh, it's been a marathon. Lot, loads and loads of companies with solid numbers. I hope you did pick some here that, you know, you might like. Uh, but uh, again, if you want to listen to other versions of the show, you can you can check out Naira Metrics. Uh, any of our, our, our social media handles uh, for more important content. This is Ugo Dre signing out. We do this every Monday, 8 to 8.30. If you miss any part of this show, check us out on any of your important podcast platforms and you can listen or stream this again. This is me signing out. Do have a profitable week ahead. Uh-huh.